Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 54 on Now You Know. Elon just tweeted out that the Tesla semi-truck event has been moved a month. Mm -hmm. We thought it was going to be at the end of September. Now it looks like it's going to be October 26th. That's still a tentative date. Yep. But uh, here's what he said. Tesla semi-truck unveil and test ride. What? Tentatively scheduled for October 26th in Hawthorne. Worth seeing this beast in person. Wow. It's unreal. Wow. It's interesting that Morgan Stanley recently called the unveiling of Tesla semi-truck the biggest catalyst in trucking in decades. And they expect that the electric truck could be 70% cheaper to operate than a diesel-powered truck. Wow. Elon said during the summer shareholders meeting that the truck is expected to reach scale production in 2018. So we're going to be attending this event. Yep. We've gotten enough referrals to attend it. And I mean, he said there's a test ride. Does that uh, mean we're going to get to ride in the truck? I don't know. So, okay. So for truckers out there, let us know what to look for because I have not been inside of a, no. a real semi truck before. What should I be looking for? What kind of amenities would you want inside the truck? And, you know, what other things this, can we report on? Is this truck going to shift like a, a, a standard truck It's does? not going to shift. So it's, it's not? Just, it's one gear. It's just like a Tesla. Wow. I mean, is this going to change the licensing for truck drivers? Like, because I know that a lot of it is shifting and having knowing that stuff. Like, Yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll have to find out. I mean, it's going to be very exciting. So, I mean, if we would love to hear, you know, what you're looking forward to, what you're not looking forward to uh, in the comments below. So Jason Crookshank tweeted to Elon, can we get a light duty pickup next? And Elon responded, what if we just made a mini version of the Tesla Semi? This is interesting. So Elon has kept saying, you're not going to want to miss the Tesla Semi event. Right. Which, Which is, I thought was just because the truck itself is such a beast. And then people started saying, oh, I bet they're going to have the next generation Roadster there. Because wouldn't that be cool if it pulled out of the back of the it truck? It would be cool, but what if? What if a Tesla pickup truck was, you know, shown off. Oh my gosh. I'm just saying trucks it makes everywhere. a lot trucks of sense. Galore. Electric trucks. Wow. We just don't know. Anyway, keep, stay tuned because yeah. we're going to go to that event. All right. So this is the Mercedes F-Cell. So what's that? So this is a hybrid, mm -hmm. Mercedes hybrid. Now it doesn't use gasoline. It uses hydrogen. Oh. This is a hydrogen fuel cell. It's basically a GLC um, Mercedes, okay. which is an SUV. Okay. It uses a hydrogen um, sort of range extender, you could think of it. Okay, so what kind of mileage do you get on the battery? So you get about 49 kilometers. It's about 30 miles range of pure electric. Okay, what do you get on the hydrogen? You get about 450 kilometers, which is 270 or so miles. Mm, that's not great. It's know. not fantastic. And here's the thing you have to charge or you have to refuel at a hydrogen fueling station, which I have never seen personally. Right, there's only a few in California that I've heard of. Right, so this is, I guess, Mercedes's idea of a green car. So this should begin selling by late 2019. Oh, well, that's kind of far away. It is kind of far away, especially for something that, I don't know, it's not that exciting. So it is a 4.4 kilogram hydrogen fuel tank. And I don't coupled, even know what that means really, but okay. I mean, so, the I mean, range you can, is, right. right. I mean, it, it's not, we're not used to, we're used to kilowatt hours and gallons of gasoline. Right, right. So it's hard to know what that actually means. And a 13.8 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. So a pretty tiny battery. Okay. Yeah. Um, it gets 147 kilowatts uh, motor. Okay. That's about 197 horsepower, which is not hmm. mind blowing. And yeah. 258 pound feet of torque, which is not also not that mind blowing. I also heard it has a 99 mile an hour top speed. I guess that's to limit the, you know, to keep the range as good as possible. Right. Um, so it, it's weird for a German car to have such a, uh, have such a low speed. Right. Cause I mean, on the Autobahn. On the Autobahn, what you're going to not keep up. And then it takes a full hour and a half, I heard, to charge the battery, even though it's a tiny battery. Yeah. That's because they went for just a regular J1172. Oh. Plug. Not not impressed. I'm not very impressed with this car. And and the thing about um, hydrogen fuel cells, when you first hear about it, you're like, oh my gosh, what a great solution. Couple problems. First of all, you have to get the hydrogen. To get the hydrogen, you have to do um, electrolysis on water, which takes a lot of energy and it's not that efficient. So you're taking hopefully renewable energy like 
from the sun or wind power. And you, you are then taking that electricity and you're powering it through water to split the water into hydrogen and oxygen. And then you take all the hydrogen, you put it in a big tank, and then you put it through your fuel cell, which generates electricity to charge the battery to power your vehicle. But it's it's way more inefficient than to just take the energy from the sun, put it in your battery, and go. And go. So that is what I have against this car. So the Denver Police Department is testing a Model S in its police force. Yes, so yeah. this is gonna be for a like community outreach vehicle. Okay, so not for chasing criminals. Yes, I mean, the LAPD is testing the Model S as a high pursuit oh, uh, yeah. vehicle, which is, that's exciting. And the Luxembourg police and Scotland Yard are also testing it as a police vehicle. Yeah, so I wanna put it out there. If, if you work for a police department, I would highly consider you go for a test drive, see what you think of how the Model S handles, yeah, um, because you'll be able to catch any criminal in this car, and you'll be able to sneak up on them quietly. That's true. It has a lot of advantages. Police cars are more expensive than normal cars because they have to outperform other vehicles. Right. And, and they have to be safe to protect police officers. They have officer to be inside. safe. And the Model S is the safest car on the road, and we would much prefer our police officers to be in the safest car on the road than not the safest car on the road. If you're going to have to get into an accident, that's I would the car to be in. Much rather you have that much crumple zone. You know, I don't know, something to think about. So Jesse, check this out. This is the Porsche Mission E. We've heard about this car before, right? This has uh, 350 kilowatts of ultra fast 800 volt charging. You can get 80% battery in 15 minutes. It can go zero to 63.5. It has over the air updates, software locked options. We'll get this. So CEO Oliver Bloom confirmed to Car Magazine this week that it will be priced like an entry level Panamera. So how much is a Panamera? A gas powered Panamera is 86,000. And isn't the hybrid a little bit more? Yes, the hybrid is about 89000 So this means that if it's going to be priced like a Panamera, we're talking in the $90,000 range. Yeah. A starting price Model S is $75,000. It's true. So they're not the same thing. I mean, that's $15,000 more. No, and that's for a base model. That's true. And we don't know what charging network they're going to be charging up at 350 and, kilowatts. And it's not coming out for a long time. It's true. They think that this car will come out by 2020 which is when it's a long way. It's so far, it's a, it's a long way away. 2020, we're going to be swimming in electric cars. <laughs> it's, if, if all of these car manufacturers are true to their word, that's true. It's going to be a very exciting time. Yeah. I can't wait for 2020, but I also have, you know, I'm holding I have them. Yeah. I have some, some doubts. So for those of you who are in New York city, you might, if you're very, you know, observant, you might see some new vehicles enter, into the traffic of New York City. Like what, what is this? This is, oh, what is Daimler's this? electric truck. So it is called the E-Canter. Wait, so UPS has already gotten a few of these and I guess there's gonna be getting even more for their fleet. Yes. So you probably it's gonna be brown, I would guess, right? I, I would imagine it's not gonna be this blue, it's gonna be brown. Okay. But it's quiet. And so this is an all electric truck. It has a 70 kilowatt hour liquid cooled lithium ion battery. It is a 3.5 ton capacity and a 100 kilometer range or 62 miles. Wow. It's made in Portugal by Mitsubishi Fuso Truck and Bus Corporation, which is you owned 89% by Daimler, even though. Oh, it's, so it's not Mitsubishi really? Well, 11% by Mitsubishi. Oh. Interesting. So, it looks like it's going to say Fuso on the front of the... What does Fuso mean? Fuso means hibiscus, which was the name of the company's first product in 1932. Interesting that they're starting again, almost. Right. You know, their first vehicle, then that now they've named it this first vehicle again. It's like they're, they're moving forward, hopefully. Interesting. Now, they did some, some tests and they found that you can save about 1,000 euros every 10,000 kilometers on this vehicle compared to a diesel version. So if, you, if you're UPS, that's a huge savings. And right. then it has about a 30% lower maintenance cost than a diesel version. Yeah. So that's why UPS is probably try, wants to check this out. Right. So, I mean, you don't have to buy diesel fuel and you don't have to repair a diesel engine. Amazing. Nice. So there's this utility up in Ontario, Canada called Electra. Alexa? Uh, no, Ale Alexa. Alexa, no. play this. songs by the Beatles. Sorry, I don't know the answer to your question. Yeah, so Electra is the second largest municipal power company right after LA's Water and Power. Wow, so this is a huge power company. Huge power company. The CEO said some pretty amazing things recently. Someone's going to cannibalize our business. It may as well be us. Someone's going to eat our lunch. They're lining up to do it. I think 
repositioning, redefining the grid from what it is as sort of a passive purveyor of energy to one that is an enabler of transactive energy at the grassroots level is a much more sustainable, profitable strategy. That is from CEO Brian Bentz. The second largest municipal utility in North America. Yeah. He said, the problem is you're trying to fit an old regulatory paradigm into a new reality and it doesn't fit. Wow. Now, this company does something pretty amazing. It's a lot like Tesla. Mm -hmm. They'll put solar panels on your roof, a battery pack in your house, mm -hmm. and let you take power during the day, send power to the power company, use your power pack as a back backup power generator. Right, and so, they make it so that you're always doing the smartest thing. Right. It has a computer that's basically saying, what should I do now? Should I be, getting should power I be from the storing grid? this right. power? Mm -hmm. or should I be getting power from the grid? Right, is there a storm cheaper? coming? Right. Exactly. And you don't have to think. It saves you money. It's brilliant, just like Tesla is, and it's coming from a utility. We did a story last week on National Grid, which is fighting this exact same thing, saying, no, can't be done, this is bad for the grid. Well, obviously it's not. Right. Chamath Palihapitiya is a venture capitalist. Mm -hmm. He's a millionaire. Mm -hmm. He invested early in Facebook. He's also a Tesla investor, and he said on CNBC this week that the BMW 3 Series business will go to zero. Wow. Why does he think that's going to happen? Well, this is what he said. There is not a single person of right, sound, mind, and body. If you could build a Tesla Model 3 online and get it delivered in 30, 60, or 90 days, or if you have the choice of buying the BMW 3 Series, that you would choose the BMW. So he's saying that there's no sane person on earth who would buy a BMW when they could get a Model 3. Well, I mean, I know it's just his guess, right? But look at this chart here. This is BMW sales, and this is what happened as soon as the Model 3 went on as a possible thing, right? Mm -hmm. 400,000 people signed up for it. And in that same time period, 25% less people bought the BMW 3. That's wow. with not even being able to get hold of a, a Model 3. Right. That's just waiting for it. Right. So his conjecture is if you could actually get one in a reasonable amount of time, like mm -hmm. a month or two, then you, why would you choose the BMW 3 Series? It's wow. priced similarly, mm -hmm. and yet you get so much more with the Model 3. Right. So the Ampera E... What's the Ampere E? That is the European version of the Bolt. Oh, the Chevy right. Chevy Bolt. Right. Just got its NCAP crash test results back. What's the NCAP crash test? It is European's version, or one of their versions of okay. uh, crash test safety. How did it do? So it got a four out of five stars. That's not bad. It's not bad. Um, and th this is compared to the Tesla. They did a the same test, basically, uh, with a 2014 Model S. How'd the Model S do? The Model S got a 5 out of 5 stars, oh. so a little bit better. Keep in mind that the S is a gigantic car and that the Bolt is, a, a, the Ampera E is a lot smaller. Right. Um, Maybe it's like smaller crumple zone. Yeah, so I mean, I, overall, just letting you know that that's what it got. Yesterday at the uh, EV event we're at, there was a 2018 Nissan Leaf. Yes, yeah, so Check we got us to, out. we actually got to go see it, got to go sit in it, got to open it all up, see what, what was going on inside. It was very interesting. Yeah, what did you think of it? I mean, it definitely has a refreshed look. I think that it's a lot more approachable for most people. I think that the, the range is, is, yet again, more approachable. I think overall it's, it's a fine car. It would not be my choice of electric vehicle. Definitely going to go for the 3. It is starting price slightly cheaper than mm -hmm. the Model 3, but you get less range and you don't get the supercharger network. So that and, is... And at that lower price point, you also don't get the fast charger. Right. You and do not so, get the Chatamo. So it's, right. it's more of a commuting car. Now you can just commute a bit further or maybe do something fun after work. But if you don't have the, the Chatamo port, it's, it's, it's hard. If you're interested in more on that, we covered it in depth last week, so mm -hmm. go check out that video. Oh, just one thing I didn't mention in, in last week's video is that it's air-cooled battery. Oh, it's not a liquid-cooled. Not a liquid-cooled battery. Ooh, so That could be a little problem. That could be a little problematic. The, the leaves have been doing fine with um, battery longevity, so I mean, don't be too worried about it. Also, I want to talk about the 2017 e-Golf which just announced its price. Oh yeah, is it, what's the price? The price is about $1,500 increase, so it's starting at $30,500. Okay. And then the premium is $37,000. All right. It has 125 miles of range. Oh, that's more. It's slightly more, and it has a 35.8 kilowatt hour battery pack. Oh, that's pretty cool. You know, we did a review of the uh, e-Golf a while back, and make sure you check out that video too if you're thinking of an e-Golf. Yeah. So, I mean, it certainly now has slightly more range, um, but overall, I think it's the same footprint, same car. All right, it's time for the lightning round. Here we go. All right, so the Model 3 production is on schedule. Yes. Uh, 1,500 for this quarter. 
Wow. Which ends this month. Wow. So, And that's mainly to Tesla employees. Or yes. pretty much all Tesla that's employees. That's all Tesla employees. And, and yeah, check these out. I mean, these are five Model 3s that just happen to be uh, sitting there at the Tesla headquarters in Palo Alto. Yeah, just chilling. And these are some that are at the Fremont factory. I mean, they're just everywhere now. Now in California. they're everywhere in California. Yeah. So excited to see some Love on these the East colors. Coast. I can't wait. VW <laughs> is planning to invest $84 billion in EVs by 2030. Wow, I don't know if that's a big number when you multi when you divide it over all those years, but Volkswagen CEO Matthias Mueller said before the Frankfurt Auto Show, a company like Volkswagen must lead, not follow. We have got the message and we will deliver. This is not some vague declaration of intent. It is a strong self-commitment, which from today becomes the yardstick by which we measure our performance. Yep, Model 3 was definitely the message. They said they want to have 300 electric vehicle models on the market by 2030. Wow, that is that is a lot. They better start soon. Sheesh. So remember we covered the story a while back. It's a company called StoreDot. Oh, right. Like it's super fast charging battery or Yeah, something. it's an organic battery that can mm -hmm. charge really fast. It's a company from Allegedly. Israel. Allegedly. Allegedly. Well, they got a $60 million investment from Daimler. So I'm guessing it's not just vaporware if they're willing to invest that much money. Um, they're planning on building what's called the One Giga, a factory in Shenzhen, China by 2022. They think they'll be scalable from one to 10 gigawatt hours per year. Wow. So let's keep our eye on these guys. Yeah, that's exciting. So this is the Honda Urban EV concept. It's a cool car. It. Okay, so when I first saw it, I laughed out loud. I, I was like, I heard you. <laughs> I heard you in the other room, and I was like, what are you laughing at? Yeah, so it's going to come out in 2019. It was uh -huh. revealed at the Frankfurt Auto Show. What's unique about it? I think its appearance, first of all, is very unique. I like it. I, I, I can see why most people might balk at it, but I kind of like it. It has... Wait, but you it said is, you laughed at it at first. I did. At first, I just couldn't believe that that is what I was looking at. Then, but you grown but to like it? But then I was like, you know what? This car actually has character. Like, oh. they actually decided that they would put some life into this car. You know, it so looks like, like a Pixar movie, it, kind no, of. No, it's true. What else does it have, though? So it has two suicide doors. Okay. Which is, you know, different. Yeah. Whatever. Different. It'll have a long center console screen. Sort That's of like, kind of like another car I've seen. Yeah, like the Model 3. I, I don't know. Overall, it, it's, cute. it's cute. And it's got this, like, cool... I don't know. It's And it's coming out in 2019. Yeah, so I mean, it's not too far away. I, yeah, that's I, not 2020. Yeah, I, I look forward to seeing it. Here's the Audi Acon. Icon? Icon? Icon, I guess. Anyway, it's a concept car. It's going to come out in 2020. Mm -hmm. hmm, I hate that date. Four motors, and it's going to have a record-breaking 700 to 800 kilometers. That's 435 to 497 miles of range. Wow. But you know what? Uh, it's just another 2020 concept car to me at this yeah, point. Yeah, we've seen a lot, a lot of 2020 yeah. concept cars. Let's move on. Can solar survive a hurricane? Uh, I don't know, can they? Well, this is a 900 kilowatt installation. That's big. It's mm -hmm. on the Weston Hotel in San Martin, which really got walloped by Hurricane Irma. Yeah. In fact, it hit 190 mile per hour winds. Wow. And it's largely intact. Yes, a couple things did get broken, but largely stayed intact. That kind of proves that this kind of installation can survive Hurricane Category 5 winds. Wow. So for those of you who are wondering about the Model 3, and you're like, man, do I, do I spend the extra dough to get these cool rims? Well, maybe you could stick with the aero wheel covers. You like the aero wheels. I like the aero wheels. But if you pull off the aero wheels, there's another set of and wheels behind it. it's easy to do. It. Yeah, Look at so this. I mean, you just basically pull on it and it comes off. And then when you need the range, you can pop them back in. Yeah. I mean, Store I, them think, in your trunk. I think this is wicked cool. Or your trunk. I want some for my leaf. Yeah. So <laughs> Renault, Nissan, and Mitsubishi have an alliance. Uh, A car rebel alliance? Well, it's an EV alliance. Okay. Let's just call it that. Uh, Carlos Gossen, who is the chairman and CEO of the alliance, said 12 new zero-emission electric vehicles will be launched by 2022, utilizing new common electric vehicle platforms and components for multiple segments. These would be basically purely electric, according to Gossen, not hybrids. Okay, well, that's great. Tesla has just released some patents. So this was, uh, its patent application was filed in May. Mm-hmm. And what it's showing is that you could replace, in 15 minutes, you could replace the Tesla Model S battery pack. Isn't this kind of old news? Didn't they already do this, like, a few it, years ago? It does seem... It, this looks like it's sort of like an on-location... Oh, this is mobile. ...perhaps thing. Oh, it, I see. So they could come be. to you. Yeah, they just sort of show up in a truck and be able to replace oh. the pack. So, what? I mean, is this something that you think they're planning on doing, or why... 
I'm not sure. I, I don't know. I mean, in the picture, it shows the old Model S grill, yeah, the same which makes me see, feel like this was like just trade secret for a while, and then they finally figured, you know, we should probably patent this. So, But explain to me why you would do that, because I, mean, I thought that Tesla had opened up many of their patents. They have for a lot of, you know, different applications. Basically, you file a patent, okay. and then you open it. You say that, you know, anyone can use this patent, but if you didn't patent it, and you oh, just and kept it a trade it. secret, and then they patented it, then be... they would be able to basically corner that market for a number of Got years. You. So it's smart to patent something, even if you do want to open it up to others later. Right. I didn't understand that. That's cool. All right, so next is our Patreon bonus story. If you would like to see this, you have to be a Patreon. Head over to Patreon. If you want to support us for as little as a buck a month, you can then see our Patreon bonus stories, which we'd be super thankful for. Head over to Patreon.com. And there's a lot of cool perks over there. A lot of cool perks. So go check those out. You can support us for as little as $1 a month. Or, you know, maybe you want a Now You Know t-shirt or something cool. Yeah. Um, we have everything over there. So definitely go check that out. And we're about to go do the Patreon bonus story. And we'll be right back. So every week we like to thank our Patreon supporters. And we've got five great people here I want to thank. The first is Jerry Sermans. Paul Chikawin. Odger Frosa. Gregor Weisgerber. And Chris Abbott. Thank you so much for supporting us. We love doing these shout outs. Uh, we love having so many awesome Patreon supporters. If you want to support us, head over to Patreon. You can join for as little as a buck a month. For five bucks a month, we'll give you a shout out on Tesla Time News because you're awesome. All right, let's do our viewer comment of the week. So All right. This week's viewer comment comes to us from Jay Pace. And what did he say? Oh, do you have an app for this? I, I should. You know what? I don't want to. I'm so tired. I need to rest my voice. Um, <laughs> I'm just going <clears> to <throat> let my phone do it for me. Oh. Jay Pace says, question, would you agree to come to Canada with the next generation Roonster if mm. it, I use your referral code? I only live 45 minutes from Niagara Falls, mm. Buffalo and Hamilton, Ontario. Go Leafs! Woo! You know what, Jay? I, I, That's a great question. It's a great question. So you're 45 minutes from Niagara Falls and Buffalo and Hamilton, Ontario. I'd say let's that's doable. Yeah. I think I think we're I think yes. Yeah. Now here here's why. Uh, we've said, you know, referral codes in the contiguous United States. Yeah, so let's remind people what he's talking about. Yes. So, I mean, we, we're we hoping if we get 50 referrals to get the next generation Tesla Roadster, which we don't even know what it looks like, but it's going to be amazing. Right. Um, and we're going to drive to everyone's house in the contiguous 48 U United States um, and give them a test ride. Right. That's what we're planning on doing, which is a crazy idea. I think Jesse came up with this idea, and nope, it's, it's that was, really crazy. I don't Zach's idea. know what you were thinking. But... Um, so then the question becomes like, yeah, if you're a little bit north of the United States and Canada, can we visit you? So yes, I think in certain places in Canada we can. And the reason that I think we're not, we can't say yes for sure to everything is mm -hmm. a, we don't know what superchargers will be there at the time because we don't right. know when the car's coming out and so forth. So there's places like Winnipeg, which at the moment I think are pretty impossible for us to get to. That said, maybe when the car comes out, we'll be able to get there. So I don't, we can't say there for sure, but places like Vancouver, we know we can get there, and we're pretty sure that we're going to be out in Seattle anyway. Right. So if you're in Vancouver, yes. I think if you're in Quebec, yes. If you're in Montreal, yes. If you're in Toronto, yes. If you're in Hamilton, yes. So contact us if you're not sure. We'll be glad to tell you if we think we can make it, because yep. we'd love to go visit places outside of the U.S. as long as we can get there. See, yep. see places like Alaska... I don't There's no superchargers. There's yet, no way right. to, to get there. I mean, we would love to do a road right. trip there Hawaii, someday. Hawaii, we would love to get to Hawaii, but we can't drive there. Right. And we have to take not just the roadster, because we barely could make a regular road trip work right. with the Model X, which has plenty of storage space and, you know, space. Oh, right. We're going to bring a whole, like, bunch of cars. Right. We're going to have to bring the roadster. We're probably going to have to bring the Model X. Man, pro we're going to have Model to bring 3. the Model 3. Man, it's going to be so... That's so tough. Right. Um... So was, what sorry, that we, sorry, have we have to bring so many cars to you. Um, but yeah, so if you're not sure if we could make it to um, where you live in Canada, Just please Facebook let us know. And, I mean, maybe it's the kind of thing where you could, you know, drive down in your new Tesla and True. come do a road come trip, visit come us. visit us. Just a small road trip, and then we could you meet know, you halfway. Meet you halfway. Good idea. Yeah. All right. So superchargers are one of the funnest things we ever get to review, mm -hmm. and we want to thank our reviewers because check these out, Jesse. Hey, Zach and Jesse. Hey, Now You Know family. Patreon supporter John here. I'm stopping out at the Harrisburg Supercharger in Pennsylvania. It's an eight stall with two pull-ins. There's one the Model S is using that right now, and then there's another one right behind me. You got the sheets behind. Um, it's not a direct connect, so you got to kind of loop back around. There's plenty of food, plenty of lodging right behind me. 
Um, come check it out. The only thing is there's construction at the at the highway right on the bridge, so it's a little bit slow getting here, but other than that, perfect. See you guys later. Hey, Zach and Jesse, I'm here at the Supercharger in Sagamore, Massachusetts, right outside Cape Cod. Uh, it's an eight stall, and it's close to a gas station that has a Mary Lou's coffee, a Dunkin' Donuts coffee, as well as McDonald's. And so there are bathrooms uh, at those locations, and there is a trash can, which is close by. Uh, I'd, overall, I give it eight out of 10. It's convenient if you're going to the Cape, and today there's only two people here, so quick charge. Thanks. Hi, Zach, hi, Jesse. My name's Paul, I'm from Sussex in England, but I'm actually in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, here is a supercharger point, quite a few bays. There's a hotel complex just over there. Really close to the airport. And um, yeah, good. Hi, I'm Patrick Rischko from the My Nissan Electric YouTube channel. I'm here in Uppsala, Sweden at the Fullerö stop where they just started the construction of a new supercharger with 10 stalls. The location is just next to the highway E4 going north from Stockholm, the capital of Sweden. They are building the supercharger on the backside of a restaurant. That's good because then the chances of having the supercharger iced is not so high. Inside they have the daily lunch special and you can use the bathroom free of charge if you use the restaurant service. But the owner says that he will probably extend the opening hours thanks to the supercharger. There is huge expansion plans for the Fullerö stop, new shops and maybe a hotel. And also there is a <coughs> gas station. Wow. wow, that's great. I mean, I love seeing superchargers all over the world. It's, ugh. I love seeing Now You Know shirts reviewing superchargers. Man, awesome. Big thumbs up. All right, so this week um, from supercharge.info, we have learned that there's one permit in Luz, Delaware. Now, is it Lewis or Luz? I don't I think know. it's Lewis. Luez. Luez. We were there, and we wish there was a supercharger there because we had to use a level two charger. We just barely made it across the ferry, so yeah. that's awesome. Um, now in construction in Taupo, New Zealand. Yes, New Zealand. It's awesome. We should go there on a road trip. Mm -hmm. Falero, Uppsala, Sweden. Nacho Doches, Texas. Norheimsund, Norway. Keith, South Australia. Cool. Yeah. Rochester, Minnesota. And Adelaide, South Australia. Wow, two in South Australia so going they're, construction. So they've got the they've got the coast of of eastern Australia yeah. and now they're expanding Moving south. Along. So soon maybe we'll wrap around the whole country. Oh man, that'd be cool. Now open the 957th in the world, 398 in the US. I wonder if we'll make it to 400 today. Mm -hmm. Is the 10 stall in Traverse City, Michigan. Wow. Number 958 in the world and 399 in the USA is an 8 stall in Burlington, New Jersey. And 959 in the world, 400 Woo! in the USA is the eight stall in Morgantown, West Virginia. Congratulations, Morgantown. Number 960 in the world and 401 in the USA, the 10 stall in Northeast Maryland. 961 in the world, 402 in the USA is the eight stall in Boston. Here it is, we just went there ourselves. And number 403 in the US and 962 in the world is the 10 stall in Chicago, Lakeshore, East Illinois. 963 in the world, 404 in the US is the eight stall in Lansing, Michigan. And finally, number 964 in the world and 405 in the USA is the 20 stall in Burbank Town Center, California. Wow, I used to work in Burbank and now I want to go back there and like visit and see, see, the, see the supercharger. <laughs> hey, you know, we just, uh, we had a whirlwind time at the end of July when we mm -hmm. went out to the delivery event for the Model 3. And you might have missed this video because it was part of the same weekend. We went to Montreal for the Formula E, the final race of the season. Yeah. Um, it's a really cool video. It shows us doing all kinds of things we didn't think we were even going to get to do. Yeah, there was a lot of really... exciting events that happened. There. Yeah, and not many people got to see it because I think they were just so overwhelmed with Model 3 stuff. So now that you've had a chance, go back and check out this video. It's really Really cool it's very fun thank you so much for watching this episode of now you know if you were considering getting a model s or an x now is a great time to do it we can give you free unlimited supercharging mm -hmm. we can give you a thousand dollars off by using our referral code and we will take you for a test ride in the 
next generation Roadster when we get it. So that is going to be very exciting. If you live anywhere in the contiguous United States, definitely even contact us. Even Southern Canada. In Southern Canada, we're going to be, you know, contact us and we'll let you know if we'll be heading into that neck of the woods. And you could use our referral code and go for a test ride in the next generation roads. And you'll be helping out. us to get these next secret levels that Tesla's giving out. Like we're going to get to ride in the boarding machine and we're going to take you along. Yeah. We're going to go check out the semi truck and we're going to take you along. So keep, give, you know, using our referral code so we can help show you cool stuff. Yes. All right, so thank you so much for watching. Now, now you know. know.